might have a couple of new people on the call. So why don't we go around quickly and just maybe introduce yourself and the organization you're representing. And we'll start um, with Joel Holmes. You're muted. Come on, you should all know. Okay, okay. Right I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's Joe Holmes with Heal the Hero Foundation. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Mr. Ramsey. Hello, Scott Ramsey, Major Ramsey, Salvation Army, Mesa. Thank you. Mark Young. Mark Young, Macy United Way. Thank you. Ms. Lawless. Carol Lawless, Oakwood Creative Care. Thanks. Laura Lee. Laura Lee Stickle with the Mesa, um, <laughs> excuse me, the Mesa Art League. Oh, I forgot who I was. Excuse me. It's been a long few months, right? Michelle? Hey, I'm Michelle Berg. I'm with Cigna, Arizona. Awesome. Thank you. Test. So what's up? Mr. Hughes. Dave Hughes with the, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I'm Dave Hughes with the New Leafs East Valley Men's Center, trying to get on my laptop. Thank you. Nicole? I am Nicole Magny with Acronis SES, and I also want to welcome Helene, who's also on. She's joining from Acronis SES Vets today. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, Thanks, Nicole. Tag. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Let's see. Scott. Looking to see if the other. Holman. Yeah. This is Scott from Mace Can with a new leaf. Thank you, Kristen. Hi, I'm Kristen Harvey. I'm with Jewish Family and Children's Services East Valley Healthcare Center. Thank you. Sandra. Various Catholic Charities. Thank you. Lisa. Uh, Lisa Olson with uh, East Valley Children's Theater. Thank you. Uh, the other Lisa. Uh, Lisa Randall, Family Promise Greater Phoenix. Thank you. Christine. Christine? Okay, she's frozen. Helene? As Nicole may already introduced me, I am with Acronis SCS Vets and I am the Development and Programs Manager. Awesome, thanks for being here. Lauren? Thank you for having me. Hi, Lauren Leverett with Gateway Bank. Thank you. Erica? I think you're unmuted. Hi, I'm Erica Evans with Cigna and Mesa Chamber board member. Thanks for being here. Krista. No. Christy. Hi, everyone. I'm Christine Haas with Noah Webster Schools. Thank you. Christy Blaker. No. Okay. Um, Mark. Yes. Wrong Mark. Mark D. Stasi, House of Refuge. <laughs> I'm going to start giving you other names. Okay. And it's Allie. the hair. People it confuse us be the because of the hair. It's the hair. It's very confusing to me. That's right. Uh, Abby, while, while you introduce yourself, you want to give us an update? Uh, yeah. So I'm Abby Schroeder from Senator McSally's uh, official office. I mean, we don't have too much of an update. Um, besides what's happening next Tuesday. Um, but one quick update that I do have is I followed up on the Library of Congress surplus books program. Yeah. And uh, a great program, lots of good stuff happening aside from the fact that they're currently closed still for COVID right now. But basically what they told us was if you're interested in getting books of any kind, um, let me know what kind of books you're looking for, what age range, what kind of books, because Fun fact, per every time a book is published, they have to send one of the books or they send two books to the, the Library of Congress and one goes to the archives and the other goes to this program. So they have tons of books right now because they haven't been able to ship them out for the pandemic. So basically they told us get our ducks in a row so that as soon as they're open, they can start mailing them out. And it's a great program, free books, free shipping. The whole shebang so i'm putting together a little plan about that so i'll put my email again in the chat if you don't have it but 
That's right. awesome. Mark, have you, Mark Young, to be clear, have you contacted them already? I'm going to be in about, wait, I'm waiting for her to put her email up. <laughs> Okay. And we'll be getting a message in about 10 seconds. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Scott, Seely, new Scott. Yes, afternoon, everybody. Great uh, great to be here. Sally, uh, as, as you know, a lot going on, uh, even in the midst of pandemic. And uh, we'll be talking later in the week. Uh, employment opportunities still are, still are courses available free training, virtual for individuals that uh, meet, you know, the income thresholds. So a lot of the community of that we serve are uh, community colleges. So uh, you've got candidates that want to get into healthcare or wanted to get into uh, technology and others. We've got, I, I maybe mentioned a few weeks ago, uh, a few folks who took the courses while they were living out of their vehicle and Upon uh, completing the course, got a job in technology, and with their first paycheck, were able to pay rent and move into uh, an apartment. So uh, there's some great uh, first rung of the ladder training programs that uh, I'd love to share. And I will I'll post a, a link to the, the site with more information in the chat as well. Great, thank you. Um, Denise, I saw you pop in here. You wanna introduce yourself? Hi, this is Denise. Wait, hold on. Hi, this is Denise Carter with Overflow Missions. Um, we're based in Mesa. Um, thank you guys for everything. Have a good day. Thanks, Denise. Sorry. No problem. Um, Bob, you want to introduce yourself and then talk about what we talked about last time? Hello. So um, some of you may know me if you're a Star Trek fan is Mirror Universe Sally. So she's the good Sally. I'm the evil Sally. So um, however, my purpose here today is to let you know last uh, Nonprofit Vitality Council, we had talked about uh, building a catalog of giving for the for the holiday season. And uh, we are well on our way to that. Uh, many of you have already sent in your responses to Linda Haskell's questionnaire. So thank you for doing that. We are trying to get that built as soon as we can, hopefully by Friday. So if you have not sent in the questionnaire that Linda sent to you, please, please, please feel free to get that into us as soon as possible so that we can get that included. We are gonna make a little PDF book that we are gonna send to all of our membership so that they have a reference guide for their holiday giving, whether it be for volunteers, whether it be for cash donations or, or any number of other opportunities. So um, if you have not received that questionnaire for your organization, you are welcome to reach out to either Linda, Sally, or myself, and we will be happy to get you a copy of that, so. Thanks, Bob. I'm, I'm looking and I think TJ moved to a different square. So TJ, you wanna introduce yourself? Hello, my name is TJ Rant with Mutual of America Financial Group and Mutual of America Foundation. Nice to be here. Thanks, TJ. And I think Lisa, Lisa Olson, did you move too? I, I may have moved, but I did introduce myself earlier. Okay. Thanks. All right. Just wanted to make sure I got everybody. Sorry about that. When your squares start moving, you confuse me. Um, Mark, just Dorothy, where are you? There, you've moved to. Do you, um, do you want to talk about what we had talked about earlier in um, kind of planning? Sure. Actually, it's one of those things where I talked to Dave Richens. Actually, I texted Dave Richens last week and said, Dave, I have an idea for a topic for the group, if it's an open discussion kind of group this week. And he said, oh, that's a great topic, very timely and very interesting for this year. And then he went on to say, would you like to lead the discussion about the topic? And it's like, I'm sorry I asked about the topic. So uh, here I am, I'm not Dave Richens, but Dave is not able to make it today. So the topic I presented, <clears throat> excuse me, is most of us do some type of annual appeal. And those who do annual appeal will typically do them in the fall. And this year being a federal election, 
Some people try to get their annual appeal out a little sooner. Some do it after the federal election. So I just throw it out there as to the kind of just figuring out from everybody who's participating. If you're doing an annual appeal this year, have you rolled yours out yet? Are you waiting? And what is your approach? And if you rolled it out, what, what are the results? So I just kind of leave it open for whoever like to jump in first to tell us kind of what you're doing with your annual appeal working around the federal election and uh, the COVID environment. This could be a quick or a very long discussion. Well, I, I, I will tell you for us, it's been incredibly difficult, you know, so United Ways rely on workplace campaigns and being able to get into a workplace uh, is nearly impossible. And I'm not sure I would allow us to do that anyway. So trying to do all of that electronically, which makes it much more difficult to do. So we're working at it. Um, I think we're going to do um, maybe more of a push. We're going to do what we normally do, but we're going to need to come up with some different strategies after the first of the year uh, to figure out, you know, what it is that we need to, to do exactly. There's just so many question marks right now about, you know, pretty much everything. So, um, you know, maybe we'll have some clarity in January. So we're doing what we normally do, but it's tough right now. Thanks, Mark. Anyone else working on an annual uh, campaign, annual appeal? I Hi, say, everybody. Oh, sorry. Just to follow up on Mark, we did do a nice job, I think, with you and with Alicia with United Way of uh, getting everything online. So we do have, it's been a monumentous, monumental uh, feat to get everything um, that we do online. Um, but kudos to the team. We, we were able to make everything electronic and do everything. So um, if you don't have somebody that's super tech savvy, it will be more of a challenge, I think, for some nonprofits than others. So when you say do, doing everything, are you, you're including the push and also <clears throat> certainly the e-commerce aspect of it. Pretty much every aspect right now of giving. Uh, most companies are not, you know, doing group events anyway. So um, all of our training materials are online. All of our training is online. Um, all of our donation pages um, are online. Um, we have lots of videos that kind of explain what we do that we've been able to create. Um, so it's a pretty robust, if anybody wants to go look at it just to get some ideas, it's a pretty robust page full of stuff. Um, so yeah, pretty much right now, I'm like, traditionally we do Mace Public Schools campaign. It's all online this year, MCCs, you know, no in public. And it, and it is making a difference because people's minds aren't, there's not those physical reminders to people that it's campaign time. For instance, MCC normally has empty bowls that um, benefits Paz de Cristo. And they have lots of like events that kind of keep in mind like all these things that are going on oh it's giving time oh it's giving time so on top of all the uncertainty of an election and covid and not knowing if you're going to be employed um there's there's a lack of like physical reminders of people that this is the giving season um traditionally so thanks alicia there i think there was somebody else that was going to ch chime in as well Oh, this is Helene Day with Acronis SCS Vets. Um, yes, camp these campaigns at year end can be brutal. They're brutal under the best of conditions. We are actually rolling out our inaugural year end campaign. Acronis SCS Vets has only just now eclipsed a year um, in formation. And so we are handling everything digitally, much like everybody else. We're actually not going to print or do any mailings. Uh, just because every we the the research that we found really demonstrates that folks are really in tune anyhow with receiving things through email, through Facebook, et cetera, and all the normal um, social media conduits. Um, and so what we've chosen to do 
because we are very veteran focused is roll out right at Veterans Day and then just carry that through the end of the year for this year. And it might look different next year, but it's a really um, important and symbolic um, pairing for us. So that's what we're doing. Great. Yes, Mark Young. Elaine, I'd like to ask you, so we were having a discussion today and I'm planning uh -huh. a physical letter to go mm -hmm. out. I haven't looked at any data, but my, my thought being is that people spend so much time online right now that maybe something tangible would have uh, some effect. So I mm -hmm. think it'd be interesting for us to compare notes at the end of this to see, because yeah. we really are an uncharted land, right? So, yes. um, and, I, and, and our clientele, but it may be true for yours too. We have a lot of mm -hmm. older folks. I, 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 yeah, and I'm guessing you guys do as well as supporting mm -hmm. that. So anyway, uh, I think that's interesting. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, but one of the things that we ran, we ran into was some pretty recent data. Uh, I would have to find it and I apologize. I don't have it on my hand. Two thirds of all year end donors don't even research an organization before they give. It's a very emotional, um, very just impulse type thing, which we're all thankful for on this call, right? <laughs> we've all even, per we've all even done those impulse donations, <laughs> performed them. So yeah, Mark, I'm, I'm excited to see how it works out. I'm in uncharted territory. I'm from the old school where you do a printed and you send it out and there's even a mailing and all of these other pieces that go with it. So. Yeah, I'm from an older school where we used to send out carrier pigeons. Uh -oh. <laughs> Stop it. No, you're not. <laughs> Anyone else working on an annual appeal at this point? Mark, I'm on the board for the Valley of the Sun um, YMCA, and they still plan to do their normal campaign this year. So, um, and we're also doing a no golf tournament golf tournament um, in place of our golf tournament, which has right. been very interesting. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, we're still on board. We'll, we're still prepping and getting ready, and we will continue to do mailers and all that stuff. But um, yeah, we'll see that. We're kind of along the lines with Mark. I think our thought process was people might want to get some tangible mail and um, get some some letters and things like that. So we'll see how it goes. Lauren, so good to see you. It's been a while. It's been quite a while. Good to see you. You too, Mark. So when are they rolling out the kind of the, the next steps on the annual appeal? So I believe it's February that that starts. We're um, end of November is our no golf tournament golf tournament, which will be like a Zoom um, hour long thanking our sponsors and that kind of thing. Um, but we've actually made more money this year in our no golf tournament golf tournament than we've made in the past three years in our actual golf tournament. So I think it was one of the gals, um, Helene had said, people are giving emotionally. And right now with COVID and all that, it's it's been interesting to see. Thankful, very thankful, but yeah. Yeah. Mark, were you gonna say something? Did you? Probably, but it doesn't, it was, I guarantee you it was not important. <laughs> okay. Mark, uh, this is Jerry with College Bound and um, we had our gala, we had a virtual gala last week. And um, I wish I could say that it went off as a virtual gala without any hiccups, but we spent a lot of, uh, of dollars on getting the venue and having a video crew there and having an auctioneer because we were going to do an online auction. And then we were also going to do a silent auction. And uh, what happened is the venue that we chose, they didn't have the upload speed in order to be able to run the venue. And so I would uh, encourage everyone as you're going forward with these virtual events, if you are looking at the venue, like, you know, we had a complete TV studio set up and, uh, and we just didn't have the bandwidth to be able to upload it. So all of the videos came across very choppy. The auctioneer had to stop auctioning on the live auction because we just couldn't uh, we just didn't have the bandwidth to be able to exchange information quick enough. And so we had to pivot in, in, on that evening where, you know, we spent two years because it was our 10th anniversary gala. Oh, we two wow. years planning this thing and we had to pivot because the internet 
didn't have the speed. And so immediately what we did is we just switched over to a silent auction format and we extended the auction for another three days. So instead of it ending on Thursday, we were able to end at 5 p.m. on Sunday. At the end of the day, we made out fairly well. I mean, everybody stepped up. We sold three of those African safari trips. We sold, four, sold 14 Cabo trips. Um, nice. At the end of the day, people stepped up, but it just was a little bit embarrassing on our end. And so I would just caution you, um, people are willing to give, um, but if you're gonna do a virtual event, make sure you have all the I's dotted and T's crossed. Great, thanks, Jerry. Carol, I think you wanted to- sure. So we, um, being, we're small, super small and very grassroots or whatever, we attempted a early annual appeal back in July because we wouldn't be able to um, collect on any of our contracts. And so um, it wasn't that, I don't know if I would say it was su super successful, but I would also say it was kind of an interesting timing. It was kind of like, this is where we are with COVID. Here's our update. We're gonna really need you this year to all of our normal funders. And then the annual report came out just short, like six weeks later. And we were able to show where the gaps were, how the PPE was covering our gaps and how we are gonna be able to make it through this uh, craziness and whatnot. And so I think that's also partially why uh, we are doing the in-person socially distance event outside. I mean, we are going to be the city of Mesa's very first one um, that got approved, I guess, per se. But um, yeah, we'll see. Because I feel like then we'll go into, um, straight from that, we'll go into Giving Tuesday, which will just continue on. So it's going to be like the the ever long annual appeal, appeal, appeal. <laughs> yeah. The word annual is going to mean it's going to take a year to do it as opposed <laughs> to uh, we're going to do it at the end of the year. So, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah. And one of our craziest way that ways that we brought money in during this time is by doing these paint parties that are virtual. So you can be anywhere in the United States. So it's not just our Arizona people, but their families now are, are jumping in. It also was a good way for us to keep our art teachers employed, you know, like something for them to do. So um, that's been kind of fun. Great. No, that is a good point. Uh, what I noticed is that we had people from Chicago coming into our gala because you can, when you have a virtual gala, you're able to bring them in from anywhere. We had people from Philadelphia. We had people from California coming in who have the, you know, just similar beliefs in, in uh, college education. And so uh, that I think was a positive piece of, you know, of, of this, uh, these virtual days. All right, so I'm gonna throw in two cents just cause I have two cents to throw in. Um, we actually created a whole separate day uh, because Giving Tuesday lends itself a lot to giving to social causes and arts organizations tend to struggle a little bit because, because of that. So we actually created a whole separate holiday called Arts Giving Day, which is in May of each year. We did the first one this last May uh, and we actually registered the domain and we've started to promote it a little bit. So it's a way for um, sort of arts and performance and, and those organizations to sort of have their own focused giving day outside of any of the other uh, giving opportunities, so. Nice, thanks, Bob. Mark, uh, Scott Seeley, uh, first of all, a question, Do, is, is anyone with St. Vincent de Paul on our call today? Okay, so I, I know someone had mentioned early on um, trying to, to create some tangible connection with, with donors. Um, some people may have participated here a couple months ago, St. Vincent Paul did a almost a telethon kind of a virtual event um, 
But prior to that event, they had sent out, um, actually you got a, a little box, which you were invited to open uh, when you received it, but they also had, I think it was an envelope to open during the actual event um, with some of the giving instructions and things like that. But it, it was, I, I felt one from, a, from the donor perspective, the fact that they had gone to the trouble to send me something sort of created more obligation for me to be on the actual event when it occurred. Um, so that, that, that I thought was, was a, a great idea. The other, um, a couple other events I've participated in lately uh, have used the matching uh, uh, approach, I guess. Uh, I, I shouldn't call it a trick or something, but um, where they had a large donor, probably, you know, either a board member or annual uh, supporter of theirs who put up a certain amount uh, that would, they would match if the rest of the participants to the event were able to raise that much or more. And as, as someone mentioned here a few minutes ago, they left it open. So um, they didn't get to their, I think it was 150,000 goal on the, uh, the actual day of event, but they kept pinging the participants for about a week and a half uh, after that. And, and they did achieve their goal uh, you know, maybe 10 days after the event. Um, but that I, I thought, and, and, and I've, I've been on at least one other where a major contributor had put a matching grant up that sort of enticed everyone else to do their part to, uh, to help the group that was online get, get to whatever the goal was. Nice. Thanks, Scott. We at the Salvation Army are having trouble with our kettle program uh, just because people are not uh, shopping as much and the stores are reluctant to, uh, to have us uh, out. We have been uh, very old school uh, with the kettle program. I think it's 127 years. Uh, people don't carry cash, but yet though it has been still profitable, people will carry cash just to make sure that they are able to give. And so it, it's causing its own little issues this year. We've gone to, and it's forced us to finally, to be a little bit more up to date. So we've gone to a virtual kettle campaign. And so it is, there's always been that question if people could give uh, electronically at a kettle. Um, there, there are a lot of people think that that would work, but it just isn't the tradition. Uh, and so people really are a little reluctant to maybe give some of our bell ringers their uh, credit card if you even had one that could swipe uh, there. We tried Apple Pay and Google Pay at the kettles. Uh, doesn't uh, work real well. But so we're trying with a, a virtual kettle campaign that seems to be catching on a little bit more. But it is pushing a, an old fashioned organization to the 21st century a little bit more. So it's been interesting that way. So I wanted to piggyback on these virtual fundraisers that people were talking about. In the spring, we had to do some fancy footwork to adjust our in-person fundraiser that is always held at down, downtown Mesa at the Idea Museum. We have a deal with them um, as a founding resident of the Mesa Arts Center. Um, oh, just to remind everyone, I'm with East Valley Children's Theater and none of our productions can take place at, at the Mesa Arts Center right now. It's still closed. Uh, so what we did in the spring was we quickly transferred over to an online uh, silent auction um, platform called Bid Beacon. Um, I did some research online. Most of the most of the outfits online want to take a sizable percentage. Um, we're small, you know. We can't afford to be paying people to help us make money. <laughs> That's that doesn't work for us we're the type of organization that gets excited over $5,000. So <laughs> um, we were able to raise uh, something like 12 or $13,000 in the spring. We kept, it was like a two week long fundraiser. This, this next year we're gonna do it again, but we're gonna reduce it to 10 days. What we learned from doing it is that it's great to have extra items kind of hanging back as the yeah, you're <laughs> nodding your head. Um, to just add in, to keep interest in the silent auction and bring new people and people who have already made purchases to the platform. 
we also learned that red wine went really well. <laughs> I happened to have two wine memberships last year accidentally. And so I had all this extra wine. So I just kept adding to the <laughs> to the thing. And those just, I couldn't even replace them fast enough. So um, we did also have a matching donor as was suggested by Scott. I think it was Scott that said that. Um, and that encouraged people. We had a $5,000 match. So that helped us get to that higher higher mark. So bid beacon. Another one that was interesting was an owl. It had owl in the name. But if you look these up online, um, you'll see what I'm talking about. That, um, so what I want to say about bid beacon is they worked one on one with us. They were really good with their customer service because it's just a guy <laughs> who launched this thing and he wanted to um, do right by us. And he, he just pulled out all the stops. So that's that's the kind of person we like to work with, people who go out of their way to help. Absolutely. Anyone else? Because I have something to share what we've done here at House of Refuge. Anyone else like to talk about annual appeal or other fundraisers are doing in the COVID environment or especially at the federal election environment? Hey, real quick also, is anyone from Paz de Cristo on? I drove past and did their um, burrito and cup of joe that morning. That ran so smooth. So congrats to them. I don't know how good their turnout was, but they did a, a really great job. And it was simple and fun. I mean, I took them to a bunch of people for work. <laughs> awesome. I was going to share with you, we used GiveSmart for our virtual gala, and uh, it was a great platform. It worked extremely well for us. It was easy to follow, easy to use, easy to give refunds, easy to move things around. Uh, so GiveSmart is another one that people might think about. And then we also used an auctioneer named, um, what was their name now? Uh, Mega Events. And I can tell you, they charged us 5,000, I believe, or $6,000 to do the event. And I, I tell you, they earned every penny of it. Um, they even took us to dinner with uh, Jim McMahon, who was a quarterback, Super Bowl quarterback for um, the Chicago Bears. And so we had dinner with he and his wife. And that was wonderful to get to know some people who might be able to uh, spend a little bit more money on, on uh, causes that matter. And so mega events would be another one. I would put a plug and make uh, make sure you, if you're gonna do an auction. That's Big that Mike. Situation. Yeah, Big Mike. Yeah, you doing it virtual and you're, you're very happy with them. I was very you should, happy. You should see them live. I mean, yeah, they, they, they do a really good job. Yeah, you're with House of Refuge, correct? Yes. Yeah, and we went to your event. In fact, that was kind of the reason that we hired them because we saw the job that they did at House of Refuge and we thought, wow, that's that's amazing. And they earned every penny. Yeah. I, I was gonna ask one more question of the group. Uh, how many are qualifying charitable organizations who fit that description? So we got one, two, three, four. So about a quarter of us, maybe a little bit more, huh? maybe a third of us are because uh, that one has really uh, has really paid dividends for us that was one of the things two years ago we were able to get qualified and uh, and that has been very helpful and i was wondering if anybody has any uh, ideas on how to move that project forward you know how, how do you i guess how do you solicit to not only your board members but people beyond the board members for for that any any uh secret sauce um jerry i'll tell you that when i was exec director at midwest food bank when we first opened my volunteers made freshly baked chocolate chip cookies and i bought those plastic um holders for my tax credit brochures and i had volunteers take a plate of fresh baked cookies and my brochures to every single CPA and tax firm that I could think of. Um, and we had the best year ever that year in tax credit. So um, 
that was just something we did that year and it was volunteer driven and it was fabulous. So that's just one idea, but your, your, your tax people and your CPAs and your accountants, that's, you, you got to get in their ear. I'm going to mute my mic because I'm going to yell down the hall to fire up the ovens. That sounds great. <laughs> we, on the, on the annual appeal, as far as the, the approach that we took here at House of Refuge, last year we did the latter. We also did, you know, uh, social media and Mark and Helene, you know, to the, to, you know, knowing the audience or whatever, I don't think it needs to be one particular medium, you know, because people, there's, something's attracted to people that's through social media, something's attracted to them through some other, you know, letter or a direct mail piece that might be a postcard. I'm going to give a shout out to Mesa Cares because we were blessed to get uh, the Mesa Cares Act, the, the technical assistance, uh, as well as the, the first round. So we got the technical assistance. And part of that was in regards to the, the marketing. And they helped fund some of the direct mail uh, component to, to what we're doing on our annual appeal. So with that, we were then able to actually also expand our reach to to new donors and it was a pretty significant reach we just rolled that out which you know we're right in the middle of you know the federal election you usually either roll it out you know well before or or shortly after so we'll do another step and our plan is to do at least two steps to it and possibly a third step so if the mesa cares is still available or whatever I plugged it time and time again. If you have an opportunity to, to get the Mesa Cares Act on the technical assistance, they they do help out with the marketing, and you know that was that really really helped us off uh, helped us out with offsetting our our budget for the direct mail piece component. And based on kind of the results of that, we'll then adjust the next step and then the results from that will adjust the, the third step. So that's been the approach that we've used at House of Refuge. I don't know how much time, I don't, so I've asked our producer, Bob Nelson uh, via text, but he's so good and he's so attentive. He's not looking at his phone, which is really, really good. So you don't go on the air and ask your producer a question, but I'm asking the producer the question. Um, What's our time? Because I don't want to take up if you've got other topics to, you know, to, to round out the meeting. Uh, so Mark, you uh, typically until five or uh, just a shade before you want to kind of give everybody a chance to maybe get moving for the end of the day. But um, you've covered anything that I was going to touch on, which is Mesa Care stuff to encourage everybody that, that may not have yet applied if you are a Mesa based organization. Um, to go ahead and make sure that you're applied for the Mesa Carries program uh, because that program is going to be wrapping up here fairly soon and we want to make sure that everyone that can participate does uh, and if you have questions about that program you can go to uh, mesaaz.gov which is the city's website At the very top of the site they've got a link there for the Mesa Carries program that can take you right into the small business technical assistance section of the CARES program, which is where you want to go. And it tells you all the details about the program, how to apply and how you are eligible. So also uh, my understanding is that the funds available through Maricopa County that uh, Mesa has partnered with them on are still available uh, up until Friday. So there's, there is also information on that on the city's website. So you are welcome to visit that and, and get information on that. Um, my understanding is that it is a relatively easy process to apply for those funds. Uh, so please, if you qualify, uh, take advantage of that opportunity as well. So um, those are the two big things that I wanted to make sure I covered. So Mark, um, the, rest, uh, the rest of the time is yours. Okay, I just I knew we were wrapping up at five. I just wanted to make sure that I, if you had other topics to cover, 
they got covered. Is there anything else that anyone would like to, to add? We, you know, we don't have to go to five o'clock. You know, one of the best presentations is the one that goes early. So, and well, uh, finishes up on, you know, well before on time. I have so a I'm question. Just, I have just a question. throwing it out. I have a question for Bob regarding the Maricopa County funds that are available. Is that part of a COVID relief package? Is that what that is or what it, are the- It is. So um, Maricopa as a county received some funds from the federal government for their CARES efforts. Um, the city of Mesa contributed a little bit to that because Mesa wanted to make sure that Mesa based organizations were eligible to participate in that. So we contributed a little bit to that the city did, not us, but um, so that is ongoing until Friday or until they run out of funds. And, and I haven't seen anything to indicate if they are close or not close to running out of funds, but I would definitely say if you've got the opportunity to check that out and as long as you qualify, make sure you get applied. Thank you. I highly, highly encourage everyone if they haven't applied for Mesa Cares, to please do so there's varying degrees of how they can help out. Hey, Bob, really quick, or Mark, um, was that under Mesa Cares and was it for that um, help with like offsetting costs for postage and stuff, was that under small business technical or small business nonprofit relief? So uh, Mark DeStazzi's uh, request came under the small business technical assistance program. It wasn't my personal request. It was House of Refuge. <laughs> sure, we know you were sending out your Christmas cards. Yeah, I mean, if it were my personal request, I wouldn't be on this call. I'd be <laughs> somewhere on a flight somewhere. Anybody else have anything they'd like to share with the group? I'll just, I, I put it in the chat, but some of the groups that I volunteered with, I don't know if you guys have ever uh, cashed in on percentage nights, like with Chipotle or Mod Pizza or Canes, but um, sp depending on the campaign and how good your uh, social media is, you can get a lot of great um, donations that way. For example, I know the one of the chapters that I work with, um, they were able to partner with the Papa John's in Tempe to get a 20% uh, percentage if they use a code for Make-A-Wish um, through the end of the year. So uh, definitely would look into that. Not yeah, we, big, big amounts of money, but at least enough to get people excited about giving social distance. Right, it, it brings in some funds, but it also creates awareness. We just had our one of our volunteer groups, which is outreach, they just did that with Coldstone Creamery, and I've done those with with other organizations. They, yeah, they they bring in funds and they create awareness. It's great. Applebee's has a program like that. Also, I think they call it something like uh, Flapjack for a Cause or something. And uh, these are really good, especially if, like we were, we were taking um, many of our eighth graders to an international night at the Phoenix Suns. Well, the Phoenix Suns weren't giving away the tickets, so we needed about seven hundred dollars, and we were able to to do the flapjack for a cause, and uh, it worked out very well. We were able to raise the money. The kids that were getting the benefit went out and worked the 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 server role and, and things like that so that these programs can work but again they're they're not going to bring you in ten fifteen thousand dollars they're going to bring you in you know a thousand you know five hundred to a thousand dollars at least that's what we found mark i don't know if it's if it's appropriate but i would like to make a pitch for our veterans art show that's going to be down at the 101 gallery and if you come see us on Veterans Day, we'll be there from 10 to 4. We're going to have art classes going on in the back room, and uh, the veterans and their families will have their art hanging on the wall. Um, we'll also be selling some uh, homemade T-shirts that the vets did as you know as a donation for our our program. So we'd love to see you down there. And Bob, uh, on so the Sunday after uh, Thanksgiving is Artist Sunday. It's a big national, supposedly first year that they've done this. It's instead of buying pajamas, you know, for presents, try art this year. So we will be at the 101 Gallery. We'll be open again from 10 to 4 for uh, with our Art League members and the veterans art will still be there. So stop in and see us if you're walking around on that Sunday downtown. Thank you. 
Morley, if you haven't already done so, if you could put that in the chat as well, that'd be that'd be great. Okay. So people can cross reference that. Well, if we're pitching, if we're pitching things, uh, I wouldn't mind pitching the Veterans Day parade. You know, this is a reverse parade this time, where the the spectators will actually be the parade going down the street, and all the veteran uh, entries are going to be aligned along Center Street, and that starts at 11 a.m. on Veterans Day. Joe, did you have something? Yeah, Thanks, I Jared. apologize for being late to the uh, to the meeting here. Uh, we saved the best for last. <laughs> well, I can tell you that we're uh, dipping into the virtual event uh, uh, on Thursday evening. So we normally do an event in support of our domestic violence programs during the month of October with Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And um, uh, this year uh, we decided to go virtual. Uh, so that's called uh, Pledge Purple at Home. And um, that'll be Thursday evening at 7 p.m. So I, I put the link in the chat and um, I, I would love to invite everybody to join us and give me your feedback on it. Um, you know, the virtual events are really interesting right now. So I don't know how long uh, uh, people will be attentive to virtual events. I, I have a feeling that, um, you know, they won't be a long-term solution, that's for sure. But uh, it's certainly, it's a way of engaging donors when we can't get everybody together. Um, one thing that we decided very early on is that uh, we'll, we'll do what looks to be a live event uh, with embedded video, but it's not a live event. Um, and I, I've heard a lot of horror stories of organizations trying to do a virtual event and internet going out or any kind of technical issues and just uh, a lot of challenges there that you don't have control over. So uh, we have pre-taped everything from our, our host um, to the variety of testimonies and, and parts of the event. And then it'll be um, broadcast over a private YouTube channel. So um, hopefully the tech part of it is you know taken care of and we don't have to have any anxious evenings this week worrying about that. Um, we also utilize the idea of sending out a package to the first 200 registrations. Um, and I think that's another way of hopefully ensuring that people who register will show up that night. And uh, so that's a, that's a great idea. It gives you a chance to promote those sponsors a little bit um, and that you don't have a chance as much uh, with a live event. And we put a little, you know, uh, swag stuff in there as well, as well as promoting the programs and the mission. The one thing I do love about the, the virtual event is that um, it, it is more mission-based. And, uh, and so I'm eager to see uh, how it all works out this week. Uh, I think we've come close to already reaching our goal with sponsorships and some pre-pledged uh, donations. Uh, but anybody who engages uh, through the virtual event, the, the program's all going to be about the mission and the programs and the services that we offer. And so uh, that's great. It's going to be good donor engagement. Uh, the trick is how many people can you get engaged to tune in on a 7 p.m. Thursday evening? Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, that's, I mean, uh, others have talked about that before. Sorry, I realize, you know, we've done some virtual events and I know this sounds really dumb, but do a do a dry run because the place where you are uh, centering your event, even if you have taped aspects of it, if that Internet's not reliable, you're DOA. So, uh, you know, I would just take some time to do a dry run, get 25 people online to give it a shot. Uh, because those surprises are not surprises you want for sure. I, I also want to say, you know, I've got a, you know, I have a degree in poetry and one of my poetry teachers um, passed away. And so they're going to do a, a reading of his work that I would have loved to have gone to uh, in the old days, but I would never have flown to Portland for a three hour, you know, poetry reading. But because of the way we're doing things now, I get to attend that. And, you know, I, I think there are some real pluses to this that we need to hold on to when this is over. 
a way of maybe hybrid real event, live event and virtual event at the same time. Because for some people, this is a handy thing. This is a good thing and allows us to move beyond just our smaller community to, to more of a worldwide or, you know, at least statewide audience. So, you know, it's trying to find that silver lining in some really incredibly dark clouds, but I think there are some good things in this. Mark, you bring up some really good points. We had watch parties and the intent of a watch party, each host could host at their house, 10 individuals up to 10 and they create their own themes. So even though our uh, gala was going on uh, and then it was igniting the journey um, and that was our theme, they were able to set up a theme of, you know, uh, whatever they chose at their watch party. And that seemed to work fairly well because they were able to mobilize 10 of their friends. They came over, uh, they sat in front of the television and they were able to watch the gala going on. And it was orchestrated to where they knew what the flow of the show was going to be. And uh, there was a happy hour on the front end where we had a, a guitarist playing and then you know other things going on throughout until we got to the auction. Um, Unfortunately, we had one of those snafus where we just didn't have the internet capability to be able to do the live broadcast and that kind of derailed us and we moved everything uh, to the silent auction format. But uh, those watch parties work well too. We have just a uh, few minutes left and I see that Sally's still with us. Bob is still with us. Sally, is there anything you'd like to, to wrap up with on this meeting? Yeah, nothing. You all handled it all already. Uh, I would just reiterate, you know, time is running short for mixed care. So if you do have um, a need, you know, reach out. And if you know of others or small businesses that, you know, have needs, um, now's the time to do it. Don't wait any longer. I highly recommend you go after Mesa Cares. It's It's been very, very helpful for us. If you haven't, already applied, like Bob and Sally say, it wraps up here pretty soon. Please apply for Mesa Cares uh, technical assistance and look carefully at it because the technical assistance may, um, may confuse some people as to the, the different things it supports. It supports a lot of different things. So I highly encourage you to do that. All right, well, it's almost five o'clock. And you've got a couple of minutes to spare to walk down the hallway and grab dinner at your own dining room table uh, for, the, for all those that are working virtually at, at home. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Have a great rest of your week. Take care. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Bye. Bye. In a couple of weeks. Thank you. Man, we can clear a room just like that. <laughs> I get dizzy watching. I know, right? Uh